Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2021 Keystone Springdale Mini 1750. This is a great couples model, one of my favorites actually when it comes to some of the smaller RVs. The main reason being of course in the back where you have this big U-shaped dinette. Folks, this really opens up the space, you have a ton of windows in here and with the new cabinetry in the 2021s, it's better than ever, right? Because it was kind of a darker brown and even though it had all the windows, it seemed a little bit dark. That is not the case anymore. The You can see the cabinetry right here. It's kind of like a grayish brown. It really helps lighten it up, especially with the bright countertops and the wallboard. I think they uh, did a great job this year. Let's start off with the kitchen because in a smaller camper, this is definitely one of the things you generally run into is having kitchen space, kitchen prep space issues, and that is not the case in the 1750. You see you have a ton of prep space right here. You have a spot for a coffee maker, can plug right into your electrical uh, outlet, no issues whatsoever. You have a light up top, so that way whatever you're prepping, you're able to see. Now, uh, they're able to accomplish that by giving you some of the smaller amenities. A little bit smaller sink. You'll see it's you know not super deep, so it will be a little bit tougher to wash and rinse dishes. Bear that in mind. If you have pots and pans, you know you may want to uh, have like a wash basin outside or something. You can still do it in here, but if it's a big residential pot, probably not going to fit in the sink. However, they did give you an updated faucet. Um, you know, it, it is high rise instead of having like a, a, just like a curve, it comes up and over. So you do have more clearance here again. So if you do have some of those bigger dishes, but also I like the fact that it's like a matte black, it's just uh, much more stylish than what you've had in the past. Next to that's a two burner cooktop. You'll see this one is in the vertical layout there. So again, to help maximize that countertop space, the downside is it's a little bit tougher to use the back burner if you're using both, but it is still pretty manageable. And then behind that is your uh, wall board. So you have a little bit of a backsplash there, which is nice. Up top, you have the microwave, a hood with a light and fan, and then I'll open one of these up just to kind of show you the storage space. So good storage space, no style in the middle. So if you have like a big organizer, something you want to put up there, you can. Uh, but chances are that would probably be where you put your, you know, your plates, your cups, your bowls, things like that. Dropping down underneath is the fridge. Pop that guy open. You will see this one does run off both propane and electric and has automatic switchover, which is fairly uncommon for this size fridge. We'll open it up and you can see that, you know, it's, it's definitely not huge, but you do have a freezer compartment. You got enough space there for a long weekend. And then right over next to that is your furnace. So if you do plan on doing some like late fall, early spring camping, the furnace will make sure you stay nice and toasty, especially on those cold nights or mornings. Two full extension drawers. This is very important because that way you have enough space for not just your flatware, but some of your larger utensils like spatulas, uh, big serving spoons, knives, things like that. You'll also see that they sw uh, switched to a Bluetooth speaker this year. Now, some people like it, some people don't. The, the downside, I guess, is that you don't have like a built-in, uh, essentially like car stereo, which is kind of what they had before, and you can kind of control the zones from that. Uh, but the advantage of having the Bluetooth speaker is you can take it with you. You can take it outside in your campsite. If you go somewhere, you go out on the boat, you can take it with you there as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, the one before didn't have like a DVD player or a Blu-ray player. So if you want that, you're not out anything, you can just bring one with you while you're going camping. Taking a look in the very back, as I said, this is kind of, for me at least, the highlight of the floor plan. That's the big u dinette with windows all the way around. Folks, for having a small camper, windows like this are great because it makes it feel a lot more open. If you have a nice view out the back, you can certainly enjoy it with that big rear picture window. And when you take a seat in here, as you can see, you can sit four people and one on either end. You can probably squeeze two people right in here. Great for having meals. Um, if you have any guests over, you know, you wanna play games, you can do that. Plus, this drops down into a bed where you can easily sleep at least one adult. If the two adults are okay snuggling all night, uh, you can probably manage to fit two people here too, but it will be a little tight. And then right over to the side, you got this guy. So you have an electrical outlet up top. Again, in case you want to plug anything in right up top there. You know, if you want to have like a bar with a blender or something, that's a perfect spot for it. Not saying you need to have a blender, but you know, if you have a margarita maker, let me know. I'll go camping with you. Um, but again, so this is good extra pantry storage, right? Excellent spot for some of your food items or pots, pans, anything like that. Right up top, you have your AC, help keep things nice and cool, wall mounted, which helps keep a lower profile. And then you will notice you also have a spot to hook up your TV right there. So uh, if you want TV in the camper, it's gonna be a good location. It'll be right at the dinette. Chances are that is where you'll be sitting anyway. 
thermostat here on the wall, this is just for the furnace. The uh, AC, of course, has the controls on it itself. Tank monitoring panel, you have your batteries as well as your tanks, plus your water pump and water heater. And then if we squeeze into the bathroom, so let me, uh, I'll close this a second, take a seat. So as far as space, so here we are, um, it, you know, to be quite honest, it is a little tight, you know, it's, uh, mainly on my left shoulder right here. If I put this arm down, kind of feel like I'm squeezed in here, but the nice thing about it is it has a long countertop. So you kind of like a built-in armrest. You want to take a nap? No, just kidding. My wife would kill me. Um, but again, you do have uh, plenty of space, or not plenty of space, but you have sufficient space here because of the countertop. You just kind of have to lean over a little bit. As far as legs, my toes do touch the tub, but I have a lot of room for my knees. So, you know, if you want to go, you know, curl it back a little bit. I'm six foot. If you're taller, I don't think you'd have much of an issue. Uh, the only problem you're going to have with this bathroom is if you are a little bit bigger, I weigh about 200 pounds. If you start to get uh, much bigger than that or you're really broad-shouldered, it could be a little bit tight here. Uh, my recommendation to the manufacturer would just be to cut this back a little ways just to give you a little more space. Um, but, you know, again, of course, you lose some of the countertop, so I guess it just depends on what's more important to you. Right underneath that, you can see some additional storage there. Excellent spot for some extra toilet paper, maybe some reading material. You'll see storage underneath the sink as well. And of course, as you saw when we stepped in, you have the mirrored medicine cabinet there, electrical outlet over to the side. When I step into the shower, I am six foot tall. You can see I basically hit the ceiling. Uh, I do have to duck down just a tiny bit. If you're much taller than that, of course, you'll have to duck down more. If you're shorter, you know, you'll probably be okay. Um, but honestly, it, it is pretty decent space here especially for how small the camper is for being a mini. A lot of times uh, when you get campers into these size, you have to duck pretty, pretty hard. Uh, this at least gives you the capability to shower somewhat comfortably. Then if we take a look in the corner, this one does have the corner bed. Now this of course is to be able to maximize the space. That is the advantage of having a corner bed. The downside of a corner bed, folks, is that whoever is on the inside, if they have to get up in the middle of the night or they wake up first, you're going to have to crawl over your partner to be able to uh, exit the bed. just makes things a little bit tougher getting in and out. You do have a window there, the nice wallboard, shelf along the top, wardrobe storage here, which is great. Underneath, you have a little kind of nightstand there with an electrical outlet as well as a dual USB port. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2021 Keystone Springdale Mini 1750. Up front your 20 pound propane tank there, right behind that, rails for your battery, and then diamond plating on the front, helping to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that get thrown up by your tow vehicle. Coming around to the side, you will see this one is prepped for solar. So if you want solar, simply buy the Zamp portable panels. You will plug them in right there. They do have several different sizes available, but they also have the controller built in. So all you have to do is basically a plug and play. Everything's pre-wired and it will trickle charge the battery for you. Taking a look inside, if you drop down, you will see the full pass-through storage compartment. So plenty of room there. If you have some longer items, you're able to fit them in there. You're also able to access things from the other side. You have the power awning, touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to go right back in. LED light strip on there as well, so you have light at night. The main entrance has a smaller grab handle, but honestly, it's all you need because this one does sit a little bit lower. You know, again, it's meant to be towed by something a little bit smaller. Uh, let me get the weight here for you. So this one as equipped is 3,370 pounds. So under 3,400 pounds, that's pretty darn good. Um, and again, low profile, so you, it, you get less wind resistance when you have the smaller vehicle. Anyway, back to the grab handle. So grab handle here. You have the LCI solid step, and just like the name implies, folks, it is very solid. I'm over 200 pounds. You can see I can hop up and down on this thing. It doesn't flex. It doesn't budge. It also has aluminum treads, which aren't going to rust. The grip tape on there for some extra traction, and you have adjustable feet. This one is currently set up a little high. I'd probably drop it down a peg or two, um, but those adjustable feet do allow you to set it up very easily in several different campsites. You'll see right here your electrical outlet. You need a place to plug anything in outside that's the place to do it. You have easy lube axles, so that way you have a greaser on the outside to grease your bearings. Taking a look inside in the back. So this is one of my favorite parts about the floor plan. I told you I like this one for a couples model, not just because of all the light and everything you get inside, but all the extra storage. You have this compartment right over here, plus the pass-through up front, and we have more on the other side we'll see in just a second. 
Square tubular bumper with end caps. You have a place to store your sewer hose. You'll also see these spare tires mounted on the back, making that very easy to access. Right there is that big rear window I was talking about, folks. And again, as I said, you can definitely enjoy the view out the back. Coming around to the off door side, we'll open this up. And again, just like on the uh, camp side, you see the huge storage space. That is just one of the things I love about this camper. 30 amp power cords right there. Your terminations are in front of the axle. You'll see both your black and gray tank valves. And the last thing I want to touch on is your water inlets. You have the city water connection in the back and your fresh tank fill right in front of it. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2021 Keystone Springdale 1750. If you're interested in this couple's model and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what you think they failed, or if you were designing this RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.